Hello, everybody, and thank you for taking a look at our great video here about everything as a service. Uh, I am really excited to be talking about this topic because we hear from our clients uh, all the time about how they're coming up with new and innovative revenue models. I am here with two of my friends and colleagues from SAP, Heidi Zhao, who runs the BRIM product and is a product owner for BRIM. Hello, Heidi. Hello. And Pete Graham. Um, Pete is a, a regular here. Pete, welcome. And Pete, you're the product owner for uh, automated revenue management, right? Yes. Thanks, John. Oh, Good to be back. Thank you. Great to have you both here. So we're here because we're going to talk about everything as a service and how there's an integrated solution from SAP. We'll talk about what is the digital solutions economy and XASS, um, bringing together BRIM and ARM, uh, billing and revenue innovation management and automated revenue management and together for powerful tools as XASS. We'll talk about the cloud and how SAP offers flexibility uh, for scalability, flexibility for you. Uh, and then we'll kind of wrap things up. So with that in mind, just a reminder that you can check out a whole bunch of content. Of course, SAP has a ton of content on their website uh, and in these same kinds of areas. Uh, we have content for you on Bramasol.com, Facebook, Apple iTunes, and lots of other places that you can explore. Uh, I think we probably have uh, well over 200 pieces of different content on uh, various subjects related to SAP finance and revenue. So with that, I'm going to dive right into our subject here. Uh, and again, I'm excited to have Pete and Heidi uh, with us today. I want to thank you both for taking the time out of your days to uh, come together with me. Thank so, you. yeah, so let's talk about this because it's come up as a big subject and it's really the digital solutions economy. You'll hear a lot of people talk about the subscription economy. And, and we like to say that's only a small part of the picture. If you think of XASS, anything as a service, um, only pay for what you use. Um, what are you entitled to? So the management of various entitlements. Um, if you're a gamer like me or you do music, um, those become a big deal to you. We have dynamic pricing models. Uh, Uber is a great example of that, but airlines, hotels, everything is offering dynamic models outcome-based models, usage and consumption and revenue sharing. And it's really across the board um, that we see this. It was regardless of industry, um, company type. And so I'm going to take a section, a, a, a pause for a second and ask, um, Heidi, from your perspective on the billing revenue and innovation management, you face a lot of customers what are you seeing out there as they're moving to XASS and what does that mean? Um, John, so SAP Billing and Revenue Innovation Management was uh, developed since 2009. And back then there was a few customers, like you said, this transfer to everything as a service. In the 2020, the McKinsey's uh, survey says over 60% Cross industries and company have selling end-to-end -end solution as a service. So the trend is non-stoppable. So this is a must-go directions. And we see, as you said, this is all industries across the board, especially for BRIM customers. You name it from the you, you mentioned here from automotive from Porsche, BMW, Toyotas, and uh, Pyrothon from the equipment and the high tech is really leading in the media like Disney Plus and all the kind of services. So everybody is moving this direction. However, not everybody knows how quickly to adopt the new pricing, as you mentioned, the agile pricing and how change their business model. So this is a really lots of business challenge here with the customer we have. So brand is really help them to transform their business models in either step-by-step, -step, the uh, transforming slowly or just one step completely mm -hmm. flipping to the other directions. Absolutely. No, that's, yeah, and our experience very similar to that with you is, you know, all the companies changing up front. Uh, you know, I found it interesting that you mentioned Porsche. Um, it turns out that Boston Consulting Duke Group did a recent survey in 2021 and and has estimated that that industry alone will grow to $40 billion 
uh, in three years. So it's inevitable, as you say. And of course, we know NVIDIA for their gaming and their video chips, um, and they are moving to a subscription model in which you can access their software. Uh, and of course, they're, they have um, usage-based models, interestingly enough, for autonomous vehicles. So um, real innovation. Pete, you know, your RAR and revenue accounting tends to be on on the back end of that, but it provides that insight to action. You, what are you seeing the customers doing? Um, John, we're seeing customers um, try to solve, obviously, their automated revenue management challenge, um, but it, it's getting more complex, right? And so we're seeing customers, basically, they may have already solved it with our tool, but they're now adding new business models or they're adding mm -hmm. new divisions or they're acquiring new companies, right? So we're kind of seeing this ever-changing, you know, um, goal of these customers to keep up with the business, right? And that's kind of what we're seeing. We're seeing this this very dynamic situation where things have moved very quickly in the business model and rev rec space in the sense of new, new cases or new scenarios that customers need to handle. Uh, and so, you know, these customers are, are trying to keep up with all that. And I'm constantly getting, um, you know, customer conversations on this. Absolutely, yeah. So, you know, and as we work with both of you and we see that same same thing. So, you know, what we're we're really you know interested to see is this idea, as Heidi, you mentioned, that customers are really looking for a, a model that supports them the way they want to do business. And it doesn't matter whether it's B to C. I think traditionally we think of this customer driven model or subscription models as a B to C model. But if you imagine a in a B2B model, a business-to-business -business model, uh, or business-to-business-to-consumer, but business-to-business, -business, this is true too. Um, we see so many, as I mentioned, NVIDIA, but we have customers who are in the uh, pharmaceutical industry, the life sciences industry, um, all kinds of different industries, you know, adapting and using these kinds of models. And it allows this, this the way we've kind of structured this is, it's different ways for customers to approach uh, the challenge if they're looking at customer engagement as the first step. How do I do that? Um, or, you know, how might I use a tool like Brim, um, subscription order management or solution order management to create a dynamic solution? How can I use entitlements for flexible deliveries? Um, and on the back end, how am I viewing um, revenue accounting and how are you looking at how all of that works? What I, I really liked was or like is how SAP has really adapted the idea of the um, intelligent finance into that space. And maybe, Pete, you can spend a moment talking about that. Yeah, so I think um, what we've seen with intelligent finances, you know, over the last couple of years with S4HANA, we've really spent a lot of investment, a lot of effort on making it more real time, right? Making it more scalable and more real time. And this fits in nicely to when customers wake up one day and someone said, hey, you, you need to create a new business model. Um, and so this slide really depicts that, right? Where the customer has come in and they said, hey, you know, our, our management, our board has decided to cover a new business model. It just so happens to be anything as a service. And with the whole SAP solution and working with the, especially the products, not in the core finance, but also the products that Heidi manage, you can customers can literally very quickly go through this scenario where you take the initial order, you can set up the first um, month's billing and the activation three, fee, you do the hardware fulfillment, then you set up the hardware billing, and maybe there's a usage component, which there often is, maybe you're consuming data or consuming minutes. Or, or something else. And now you go into a cycle where there's new billing right each month. And so all that's being supported by the SAP intelligent finance platform. And in the background, revenue accounting is also if you've enabled it, right? It's also there and set up. It's it's tracking all that rev rec items and the analytics are embedded, right? So it's it's very nice. Basically, you know, I, I really think it's a great takeaway that, you know, these business models that are are coming on with with such ferocity right across our customers mm -hmm. are, are quite easy to pick up or I should say straight forward to pick up with the intelligent finance platform. 
Absolutely. And I think what's interesting, Heidi, and maybe you can comment is it's you can see the brim in here, right? Billing and revenue innovation management right on the circle here. And we thought of it, you know, I think I would love to get your thoughts because traditionally I think a lot of companies think of this as a CRM initiative. And really it's a business model, intelligent finance model. Can you comment on that? It's really so true, right? You're talking about how you guide the customer to create a different type of order, as Pete said. It's not only the deliver order, there's a one-time charge, there's hardware, and there's subscription, and there's a uses based. All this contract lumps them together, and you want to have aggregated billing to the customer so the customer can have holistic view, but back end unlike the traditional you create order you deliver and the revenue recognition is purely based on deliver based on invoicing it's based on the consumption based on different type of trigger and all this is embedded seamlessly between the brain and the revenue accounting together to work together automated this process and you're talking about the high volume b2c scenario also B to B high volume here requires certain rule intelligent to build in the back end to automate it, the entire process to make a smooth transition for customer transfer to traditional order to subscription uh, service consumption based uh, um, business model here. And the intelligent is not only built on the revenue recognition side and also for on the analytical side of the pricing simulation. If I change the pricing, how does that look? How does that affect my future market, my revenue generation? And the back end, the analytical of the customer behavior, customer payment and credit collection, all those whole process, SAP is building the AI and analytical tools throughout the entire circle. And, and I think you you led into the next um, quick you know, or the next topic. And I think that's so powerful that you you mentioned that. And I think I, I'll I'll, by, I'll mention by the way, you know, it is cyclical. And I think Pete's and your point about the idea that this is 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 a never ending circle, right? Because it may very well be that you get to the second uh, month and you discover that you really want to modify your plan. Um, and by having an integrated solution such as Brim driving that front end and allowing customers to do that, integrated with revenue accounting, of course, gives you that complete picture and an accurate picture of your financials. Um, and so, you know, I believe, you know, and we've seen that many of the world's leading companies moving in this direction really are taking advantage of Brim and Arm um, together, um, allowing you to, to gain these, and I'll, I'll, I'll ask you to talk about those, but maybe, you know, Heidi, you can talk for a moment about that integration. You mentioned that whole integration um, between BRIM, the GL, RAR, um, and, and how are you seeing people take advantage of that? Yeah, so um, uh, I, as I also mentioned earlier, right, from the um, traditional ways, the uh, order creating delivery, that's revenue recognition and posting to RAR, and also from the non-traditional way, as we talk about the from subscription base, that the revenue is recognized based on contract, daily, monthly, weekly, based on certain schedule that required from the uh, compliance and from the contract perspective. Also from the here mentioned the fulfillment you mentioned here based on certain consumption, certain uh, service delivery, those kind of triggered the revenue recognition in the back end. And the RAR is uh, smart enough to build all those kind of rules to recognize the, the signals and also the postings from brand and posting the correct the revenue recognition and finally deliver to general ledger. Right. And you make a great point, Pete. You know, your 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 promise, your brand promise has always been the automate and simplify. Um, maybe you can 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 talk about how this integrated process or this integrated uh, platform is so powerful around that brand promise of automation and simplification because you if you really think about it in this digital solutions economy it's anything but simple 
Um, it's it can be highly complex as you think of people having usage based models and the principle of the fourth step of the model talking about allocations based on a standalone selling price. Well, what is that based in in you know if it's a usage or consumption model and and the ability of brim and rar to come together is so powerful right yeah i really think it's extension of the automation right i mean we've we've had customers i think for over five years i think we've introduced the the brim and and the um integration to arm slash rar um and you know they their challenges has remained consistent in the sense that they have an ever changing market and they want to adapt quickly. So they have, you know, the billing and revenue innovation management tool that helps them with that. But then they also want to see the flip side, which is what will it really mean if we're able to achieve these marketing results, right? And so that's where the integration into the RevRec piece helps. And they can literally, some customers have run these scenarios where they, you know, look at the real RevRec results, right? And so, um it's really extending right so it's you know this combination now of you've got two two tools and now they're combined and you've got more flexibility with the you know the end outcomes right in terms of scenarios or real world business either way you can look at the real rev rec picture and and that 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 integration is so crucial as you know we talk to we work with our customers as well around you know a, a master data and the general ledger itself and the accounts and and when you have solutions that are not integrated with this you have to ask whether they're spending an undue amount of time um reconciling and and um looking at manual workarounds and things and i think that that's a huge powerful solution uh, for that so with that in mind of course we always think of sap um as a powerful solution it's got a tremendous tradition over the years and everybody looks at it but it's also a, you guys are a tremendous innovator and innovation today is all about the cloud um and really you know for sap it's about how we're driving or you're driving um xass in the cloud with flexibility and scalability but you're giving customers choice um, and maybe you know you can comment a moment. Um, you know, Heidi, you can, we can start with with the brim side of the equation, then we'll talk about automated revenue management. Um, but we give customers a choice, and what, what do we mean by that? I think the general strategy is cloud first, right? So we gave customer choice of public cloud, private cloud, and hybrid cloud, and. Mm -hmm. The public cloud, of course, the single coding is easy to implement, is quick and agile, but then that's also very simple, so it doesn't give the large customer flexibility and customization choices. And also for um, the for that reason, we also provided the private cloud for customer, like we own the largest customer in the world right so they cannot do one step moving to the public cloud we also give them the private cloud and uh, choices so they have the cloud flexibility on the other side they also have their own customized the solutions there and to do the um, next step step by step moving to the public cloud goals there so um I think this flexibility is important. It really depends on customer, their current plan, their future plan, and their size, and their, their volume there. So um, I think SAP had very smart choices to give customer their own choices to choose here. Right, and, and, and so much so on the front end, I mean, some of the world's largest companies, and we can, can talk all about them, but you know, they offer all kinds of different upfront systems that are their proprietary systems um, or other solutions and BRIM and automated revenue management, RAR, are um, adaptable that way. Um, I think, you know, Pete, when I think of automated revenue management and all the questions we get, you know, can I integrate this with the cloud? Um, can I integrate with some of my point solutions quote unquote of course absolutely you can it's more powerful when you have sap but of course you can integrate it non-sap and and what choices you know how do how does how does the automated revenue management 
enable that choice as well. Well, I, you know, the automated revenue management um, portfolio is meant to cover a wide spectrum of of mm -hmm. um, requirements, right? We've got customers that are running a couple dozen of contracts a month to millions and millions of contracts a month, right? So it, there's a huge spectrum. And so we really kind of have a choice that's fairly flexible for customers to choose the best option for them. And that also includes the best cloud option for them. Yeah, and and I love that that you know, Heidi, you set it up so well with the idea of it's to be public cloud, private cloud, or hybrid. You know, we're here to give customers a choice. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. I want a couple of quick takeaways. Maybe Pete, um, I'll ask you to kind of you know your takeaway was this robust business model. Um, yeah. What I should customers and people yeah. think of? Well, I think you need to think about things holistically, right? And so that's where SAP finance, intelligent finance really has, you know, that's the way we think. We think end to end, we think real time, um, and that helps when customers have things like new business models, like anything as a service. So, you know, our platform allows customers to quickly adopt um, those new service um, offerings. And Heidi, you talked about flexibility that, that came out several times. We want to kind of what, what what should a client, somebody listening to this, walk away with from flexibility from your perspective? So the everything as a service, typically we offer end-to-end -end integrated from front to back office solution. But think about flexibility. If you are not ready one step, one step there, or you want create everything as a service as a sidecar, you can also implement one module at a time and then integrate it back to your existing landscape you have. So you don't need to have full all in there. So you have the flexibility, like we said, hybrid versions and to test it out and to test it your new business model and then analyze the profitability of it. So we have give you this choice for your complex business model to transfer step by step there. That's uh, really important. Also, we get, we pave the future roadmap for you, right? Because we are capable to uh, to support the high performance for your future growth. Think about today, maybe your site card is only, uh, as uh, P said, it's only like a few hundred contracts, but in future, you could grow millions of contracts. But we provide that kind of platform and high performance to enable you not limited your future growth as well. Absolutely. Absolutely well said. So with that, I want to thank you both for uh, spending time with us, um, with me. Um, uh, hopefully, those of you who are listening to this, you got some great messages uh, out of this, and we look forward to um, you asking us more questions. Um, so please do follow up. You can check us out. SAP.com, of course, has some great uh, videos. You can come to Bramasol.com. We have over, as I said, hundreds of different items to allow you to understand how to take advantage of this. So with that, I want to thank Pete and Heidi for your time. And I hope you both have a, a great day. And I look forward to uh, speaking with you again.